The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. All right, Monero Master, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm loving this shirt, man. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was appropriate. Um, my um, my wife actually um, played Monopoly as a child with her older sister, and it was only when she became an adult that she figured out why she always lost, and that was because her sister was always the banker. And unbeknownst to her, uh, her older sister was stealing money without her knowing. That's why she never won. I thought it was, it was quite appropriate. Uh, it's, it's a life lesson. It's kind of how how yeah how, how life works. It's the game we're playing every day, right? <laughs> yeah, and then also I've got a background in uh, the games industry, uh, tabletop games. So it's it's a nice little crossover of my interests. <laughs> oh, really? Really? I think somebody made a Monero Monopoly game though at one point, right? Really? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I, mean, I think D Diego. Do you know Diego? Um, Cipher Cipher Stack. Diego? I don't know. I don't know. Rings a bell. Uh, okay, yeah, he was. He I was. Might recognize he, him. He was, uh, uh, you know, big in the Monero community. Helping out a lot in, in years past. Now he he's moved on to building his own app and whatnot. Okay. Um, but I think he created a Monero Monopoly game at one point. Okay. And if not, you should bring bring it back, man. Start selling these on XMR Bazaar. I'd buy I'd buy Monero Monopoly. <laughs> well, talking about XMR Bazaar, I just want to congratulate you and your team for getting that up. Um, been using it, putting the listings up oh, there. It's cool. Very intuitive. It's fast. It's you know. It's really great. So yeah, congratulations. It's something that we, we need in the, the space. And yeah, I wish it all the best. And I'm going to do my best to try and support it. Fantastic, man. Yeah, let me know if you if you have any feedback, things you think we should be doing. Uh, all ears. It's it's definitely a, a work in progress. Uh, thankfully, Anarchio or BT Dev is what he's going by now. Uh, is you know he he built this thing from scratch and he's he's sticking around and continuing to iterate it for us and I'm paying him monthly to do so so hopefully he, he he's constantly saying that he he may need to leave but he's been saying this from day one um, <laughs> but he's been sticking around he's he's quite the character I don't know if you've read any of the chats that we that we have with him uh, but all in all a fantastic guy he built Kuno mm -hmm. and he built Biteo which is basically what XMR Bazaar has become. We I had I basically had him rebuild that from scratch. It's got the Monero multisig built into it. So very excited about it. Yeah, any 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 feedback you have, please let me know. Well, but, certainly, uh, certainly when you get you get a lot of listings and it's more competitive in terms of getting your stuff in front of people. I mm -hmm. certainly advise in terms of um, how ads should be displayed. That's my bread and butter's background in, in market digital oh, marketing. So yeah, um, for sure. Please. Yeah, well, definitely. I want to do that in in a in the right way, in a nice way. Yeah, we got to be careful with how we we're gonna we're gonna need to add some kind of revenue model, otherwise the thing won't be sustainable because we don't take yeah. any fees on transactions. But I also, obviously, I want to do it in a, in a way that's as respectful to the users as possible, right? Yeah. Um, but creates a revenue scheme where we can continue to grow the grow it globally. You know. Um, so Monero Master, but though we, we brought you on today because I, I believe you're, you're starting, you're the one who started this initiative of uh, this putting a badge on your site or wherever where they, that you're part of the Monero, that you're taking the Monero Circular Economy Pledge. Is that correct? Yeah, I sort of uh, kickstarted it. <laughs> um, That's a great initiative. I love it. Yeah, I think myself, like many others, when Local Monero shut down, I was like, oh no, <laughs> what do we do now? There's a bit of despair. Uh, but then it really got me thinking, do we even need exchanges? And, you know, if I'm going to get Monero, I think the best way to get it is to offer a service or a product that you can receive. So I was just convinced at that point, I'm, I'm not really going to use exchanges anymore. I'm going to try and uh, sell goods or services for Monero. And that's how I'm going to acquire Monero. I think I have enough Monero. Monero. I want to start using it and build, actually start building economies and not just sitting on it as like a, like a stock or an asset. So... And I found when I was purchasing things with Monero, I felt really good. You know, you get the sensation, like I'm I'm fighting the system, <laughs> stick it to the man, so to speak. But then sort of thinking, well, if I bought this with Monero and this individual is probably converting at least some of it into fiat in order to pay bills and things. But what if they what if they are exchanging all of it into fiat? Then I may as well have just mm. purchased with fiat. It kind of right. defeats the purpose. So I get the sensation of building an economy, but 
you're not really doing that. So I just reasoned and thought, no, it'd be really great if there was, you know, a, a sort of a common pledge that people could just say, I'm going to, you know, commit to using Monero within a Monero ecosystem and, and trying to build this, build this up. And then it's also a great marketing tool to build social proof. It's, it's a way for people to stand out in the, the Monero economy. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm different from everyone else because I'm willing to use the, the income you give me and I'm going to put it back into the Monero ecosystem and I'm going to try to build this up. Now, I know that, that not everyone can do that and that's, that's absolutely fine. And um, one way I'm doing it currently is I'm just limiting the amount of clients that I take with Monero and that's how I can make that sustainable. So it's going to be mm -hmm. different for everyone. I understand different industries and different businesses have different uh, revenue streams and revenue obligations. So um, there's been a lot of community feedback since I sort of kicked it up. So um, it has, I think it's, it's developed in, in a positive way. Bring, bring, can you bring it up, share your screen, bring up the um, maybe your website just so people know what we're sure. talking about here. The, uh, the pledge banner that you created. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I you know, Sunita and I live it every day. Um, but you want you want to be honest with putting up you putting up the badge, right? So I, I think I think it's you, you put up this badge if, if you're if you're pledging to attempt to live off of Monero, right? If you're accepting Monero, you're you're attempting to then use that Monero to spend it some somewhere else. Uh, but like you said, it, it is easier said than done. I think Sunita and I uh, are in the, you know, the one, one, I would think in the one percentile of people that actually um, use it quite a bit because we run all our businesses off of it and we're dealing it with constantly. So like we're constantly running into the, you know, the dead ends or the areas where, you know, maybe Monero is, isn't working for your needs. But with things like gift cards and stuff, you can get quite a bit done with Monero. Obviously, the the, the goal here is though to to not use gift cards to find somebody else that's willing to natively accept it, uh, and that's why XMR Bazaar was built in the first place. That's literally the reason why we built that. Um, but yeah, I would I I guess I would I would put this pledge up on Monero Topia conference. I mean, obviously, is every payment we make with Monero no? It's not, but we we certainly try. Um, all the revenue, most of the revenue comes in on for with Monero. People buying tickets. We try to get the sponsors to pay Monero. Some don't. Some pay cash. Um, and then when we turn around and anything we're buying for the conference, obviously we we try to use Monero directly. But it's uh, it's a great initiative. Easier said than done. But like I was saying earlier in the show, the only way we make this happen is if we all just start doing it. So I think. Uh, you summed it up well and simplified the concept, and now people just need to realize it's a matter of opting out, right? And then opting mm -hmm. into the Monero circular economy. This doesn't happen unless we all jump into the pool, right? We got we to we gotta all go in together, and then then it will it will start to work and function. Yeah, and I was quite surprised, to be honest, by the integrity of a lot of Monero businesses because a lot of folks. Where I love this initiative, I love this idea, but you know this is not something I can actually build into my business, um, which I, I was surprised by because anyone could just say they're doing this and then lie and not do it because you know, currently it's just like a word is my bond, right? Um, so in response to this, we we did, I, we did sort of develop this out and we created this mini pledge. Oh, okay. So, wait, wait. So, before you go to the mini pledge, just scroll. Up. What what is the 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 true pledge if you want to take sure. it? Sure. Um, so you're sort of committing to three to three principles. Uh, so you pledge to use. Uh, the, your gross profits, and that's that's key, gross, which is all your profits, of your Monero sales to purchase other products or services with Monero. Uh, you pledge not to use the exchanges to convert your Monero into a fiat currency. And then you, you pledge to also seek out other businesses that are, have adopted this pledge. So those are the three. Trying to keep mm -hmm. it super simple. Yeah, so, so I'm thinking for myself, right? So we, uh, like I said, most of our, our revenue is in, in Monero. We never, we never exchange Monero into fiat. But what we do is we use our own fiat to cover our costs, right? It's kind of a way for me to c continue to acquire Monero. So I'll invest money. My own personal money will go into the business in, in form of cash to pay bills rather than selling Monero. So we, we, we I don't think we really ever do that. Uh, what we do do is seek people that are willing to accept Monero and use it in that way. 
or maybe send them Monero and then they transfer it to another crypto or something, right? If they wanted mm -hmm. Dogecoin, we'll use Monero and maybe Insta swap it into Doge. So yeah, it's a it that's a hard pledge. So what would I would I can I put up the Monero Circular Economy pledge on Monero Topia and Monero Nodo and every I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I I I don't know if I truly am living up to this pledge. I don't know if anybody can truly live up to this <laughs> pledge, my man, right? Now. Like because you're basically you're saying, so I would the only way I could use that Monero is if I turn around and, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm pretty close. Well, I, think I think you are pretty, pretty much doing that because yeah. yeah. what I'm doing is as as, have, as a marketer, you know, I have my sort of normie fiat business, and then I and this is works really well for contractor uh, contractors or um, consultants because you can say, well, I'll take on two clients and. It's, it's 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 pocket change. I don't need it to pay my expenses. I pay all my expenses, my electricity, my my internet, my computer hardware. That's all being paid through my fiat side of my fiat business. And mm -hmm. then anything I make with Monero, I'm just gonna. It's basically profits, and I'm just gonna keep that within the Monero system. So that's how. All right, I, yeah, that, that's, I, that's exactly what I do. Doing. Yeah, so okay. I think I am the Monero. Yeah, I'm I'm there. Yeah. All all our Monero stays as Monero, and then we seek to use it as Monero, or you yeah. know, directly. Yeah. So yeah. So it's the gross profits of your Monero sales. So it's not your mm -hmm. entire entire sales. Right. Um, right. Okay. And then the the mini pledge, which sort of separates its itself out from this, I have to go to this. It is uh, it, exactly the same. I've sort of highlighted the key differences, but this is net profits. So this means that if you make a Monero sale, you can transfer uh, a portion of that the profits of that sale uh, to Fiat in order to pay your expenses. And then mm. any any sort of net net profit, which is after you account your expenses, you you, you try to keep that as a best of your ability in the Monero ecosystem. So it's sort of inspired by the, the P2 pool, a side change mm -hmm. of the main chain, which is for like right. heavier computers. And then if you've got a smaller system with a smaller hash rate, you you use the mini chain. And this is the same concept where people who agree with the spirit of this pledge, they can adopt this mini pledge. And then they can put that on their business with the intention of eventually going to that full pledge once their business yeah. scales. No, I'm definitely the full pledge. Yeah, because we're, we're we're never selling, we're never trading Monero or selling Monero. We're only using it for purchasing other things. Um, right. And that's basically what it comes out. That's yeah, that that is the way, guys. This is this is where we need to. This is where we need to get. If enough of us are are doing are think, doing this along these lines, uh, it will work. And there's sure. a download link here, and I intentionally included the Illustrator file, so you can tweak it yourself. If you need to put it in a different language, you can. And if if you're mostly dealing with you know, Spanish clients or customers, then you can just you know change the language and customize it as as, as we, we say, Monero is permissionless. So trying to make this as permissionless as possible, just give people their every all the tools to do what they will with with it. Fantastic, man. I'll, I'll add it to Monerotopia.com, the conference website, and I'll add it to Gratuitous. Same thing there. Any expenses we pay, we basically we use fiat that we already have. Uh, we're not selling Monero for those purposes. Um, or we're using it directly. So that's cool. Yeah. Are, are, you, just... seeing, are, you, are you seeing other people? Are you seeing good up, uptake with this? Yeah, well, um, where do we have here? The um, Go back to the original. Yeah, here. I started listing some here. There's probably more. This is only the some I could, uh, could could catch okay. the, the folks you've uh, putting on. A uh, real shout out to Untraceable on Twitter. He really did a, a great job of sort of spreading the word and getting a lot of kind of tagging individual businesses saying you should do this. And then like a lot of them were then adopting it. So um, I, I don't know if I'll be able to continue to do this. Um, <laughs> yeah, you'll have a whole long list. Yeah. So well, I, I, this, you, this will you, probably change. You could add, uh, add Monero, you could add Monerotopia.com and uh, Gratuitous if you can. Okay. Because uh, we'll definitely we we've, we've been uh, legitimate Monero circular economy businesses for a long time. Dutch Cheese Boy, I see him on there. That's who I bought my cheese off yeah. of off, yeah. on XMR Bazaar. So That's fantastic. Here, I think he actually has. <laughs> yeah. He's put it here. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope to see a lot of these popping up on XMR Bazaar vendors uh, posts. This is this is great, man. I yeah. love it. Oh, let me just. Um... So it's just got a lot of tabs here open. Um, now, one thing I also maybe we could we could jump into this is I wrote an article on tips on how to improve your Monero market listings. Um, oh, this might be okay. worth um, jumping into. My background's in marketing, so I obviously deal with uh, large amounts of ad spend 
and you get a lot of information from that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you can compile sort of good practices. We call them hygiene factors where uh, let's say you're to go on a date. If you don't brush your teeth, does not I mean it doesn't guarantee uh, the next date, but it, it certainly will harm your chances of getting that next date. So <laughs> I think there's best practices in terms of just putting your listings on uh, various marketplaces, um, obviously XMR Bazaar being included in this. Um, so I, I can quickly go down. Uh, yeah, those, please. If, if you think you, it might be useful. Yeah. So I think one of the key things to start off with is understanding the buyer mentality of Monero. You have to understand your customer. And we have to recognize that it's harder to, to earn and spend Monero than it is regular fiat. So the convenience side of things is sort of on the um, fiat side. In certain circumstances, I, I will say, I actually think international payments are um, easier with Monero. Um, in fact, I recently had For an opportunity sure. to get my, my mother-in-law <laughs> into Monero um, because we went to, we, they live in a different country, so we went to see them. And we weren't carrying cash. We wanted to pay for a takeaway. And um, this, the certain takeaway only accepted cash. And uh, so I said, okay, well, they had cash in the house. We'll, we'll pay you via bank transfer. Um, and on the, the thought of setting up, you know, getting all the details and, you know, opening up my bank app and authenticating it and sending, you know, processing all that information to just to buy takeaways. Just, was, I jokingly said, I'll give you cryptocurrency if you like. And she perked up. She's like, sure. And I then set up her, her wallet. I wrote down the seed for her, told her how important it was, and then sent her Monero. And uh, so she was delighted. And it, it took what, five minutes to do. And it was so much easier than an inter international bank transfer. But that aside, <laughs> there's some circumstances where Monero is easier. But generally, yeah, no, we we've come we've come across it all the time. We have to do wire transfers sometimes for like gratuitous, like out of a pure need. We're like, please just accept Monero. Like it is such <laughs> a pain in the ass to use the traditional banking system for sending a payment, and you get you get totally robbed. It's like forty dollars mm -hmm. in fees to send yeah. whatever amount. It's in, it's insane. The wire, yeah, the whole and then wire transfer. Yeah. if you're sending, I don't know, pounds to dollars, and they're they're exchanging it at some terrible rate and <laughs> robbing you there as well. So. Yeah. And then when you show them Monero, like sometimes I just get people like just just do a test, just download. I'll just send you some for free anyway, just so you could see compared to sending a bank transfer, and they they get it within seconds, right? And no and mm -hmm. no fee. It's just like oh, and wow, yeah, unbelievable. So yeah, understanding the the buy mentality of, of folks who people who are going to XMR Bazaar, um, I think they're going to be asking three fundamental questions: Is is this something I need? Is the deal or discount offered worth the effort it was for me to acquire Monero? Like, is this such a good deal? I just have to buy, I have to just buy this with Monero because buying it with fiat is like I'm just leaving money on the table. And then, is this something that aligns with my philanthropic or philosophical principles? So I think the Monero space is filled with people from all various backgrounds all different belief systems but there's a common commonality in <laughs> um our fervor for a hatred of the fiat system and i think that's one thing that actually unites um uh, the group uh, we all want better money we don't like mm -hmm. bad money um so that's something that you can lean into uh, with and this i think the monero circular comedy pledge was as part of this um issue that we're seeking to address that look i'm i'm, I'm committed to building an economy that ha uses better money and then yeah i mean even even the uh just to push back a little bit um is it something i need obviously is the deal discount offered worth the effort to acquire my money like I, I don't think everything needs to be a better deal per se right um mm -hmm. if i could buy my pasteurized eggs with monero directly i'll, I'll pay a dollar more to use monero for that knowing it's going direct to the freaking guy no banks were involved nobody's taking your percentage of our, our transaction and we're doing it in a way that can't be stopped where the, it's like being at a farmer's market i'm putting money in this guy's pocket he's putting eggs in my in my car like i'll i'll, I'll pay a premium for that as a, as a monero user Right. So mm -hmm. how do you, can you, right. I mean, what do you, what, what is that, that kind right. I think there's a lot of us that just want to live off of Monero for cash purposes. Cause we, we, you're benefiting as a buyer by using quote unquote digital cash and you're benefiting as a seller at, at, as well. Right. Because you mm -hmm. don't have any corporations that this is going through. So they're not taking any fees and also government isn't watching every transaction you do and then you you turn around and you you pay your taxes appropriately but it's not happening in a way where we're all being surveilled there's there's a lot of benefit in, in like using cash right like that's why people mm -hmm. like 
using cash at restaurants or things like that. So, or using cash to pay your gardener or using cash, right? There, there is a, a real need for that. And it's not necessarily that you pay, pay less, but you get value out of just being able to do that. What, what, sure. what do you think? Well, I think that this, this is an important topic and it, it might even deal with um, the kind of differences of opinion in terms of privacy and amenity for businesses. Um, I listened to a lot of the Minericon talks recently. A lot of them were great. And uh, one term I, I constantly heard uh, being brought up is that we need amin amenity. More people need to embrace amenity. Um, the reason why is we need plausible deniability should there be some type of issue. My main concern with that is that totalitarian regimes don't care about plausible deniability. Right? Uh, totalitarian regimes will, at a drop of a hat, throw you and your family in the gulag um, if they if they want to. If they need a road build, you know that's that's how the gulags operated. Um, mm. So I think there's certain circumstances, absolutely, amenity is necessary, is needed. Uh, I, but I think in, in some context, it's actually deleterious. And business is is one of those things. And you gave an example of like your local egg farmer. You probably have a pretty good relationship with them. You're probably talking to that person on a first name basis. You know that when you support this person, you're putting money into like a family, a family farm or something. Um, so if that person was anonymous, you wouldn't really have that connection, that human connection. So I think when it comes like, when you talk about but they don't need more. to be maybe i'm missing it. but if i'm buying my eggs on xmr bazaar from somebody it doesn't have to be anonymous they could be mm -hmm. they could be you know it could be uh whoever it could be you. yes well, you, that, well that's you, my you point got, you got into yeah okay my point is that it, it's there's some type of human connection that you have so you're willing to pay more because you're supporting you just supporting the Monero economy and you're supporting that individual you probably right. wouldn't have that same attitude buy, buying McDonald's with Monero, right? You're probably not, not going to overpay sure. With, sure. because that's a corporation and you don't really care about that corporation, but you care about the individual and the, their right. small, small exactly. business. Exactly. So, yeah, I think that's great. If, if people want to overspend, like you, you can always do that. I, I think the terms of the discount is, especially when you're starting off, you don't have reviews on XMR Bazaar. Nobody knows you. You kind of want to give as much incentive to purchase with you as possible. And mm -hmm. to be honest, because the, the transaction fees are so much smaller on Monero than traditional banking, that everyone can give at least you know two percent, five percent discount, right. so that you can just put that money back into the your customers' hands as, as a gift. Um, so Very I think that's true. that's really kind of the overarching um, emphasis I was I was I was thinking of when addressing these kind of three three principles. Awesome. So then going on from there, your listing kind of needs to do four things. It needs to clearly outline what your product or service is. And we see this in advertising all the time. The ones that do the best, they aren't clever or you know, <laughs> you know amazing. They, they are very simple, usually too simple, like ironically simple, where you just need to very clearly outline what this is. And essentially, you're trying to generate a oh, yes or no response. Like, I'm interested, I'm not interested. Um, and that's really what you're trying to do. You need to quickly detail how... It benefits your potential customer. So this is really coming into things like solution selling. What solution are you actually going to um, provide for your customer? And then give a compelling reason to pay with Monero instead of fiat. And this, I suppose, this comes back to these kind of you know philanthropic principles. I'm going to use the Monero Circular Economy pledge. I'm going to use this in this economy. I'm going to build up the economy. So I'm giving you a reason to purchase with me using Monero. Um, and yeah, I think just demonstrate that you you support the Monero Circular Economy. It probably feeds into num number three, um, all there together. Awesome, man. So, um, yeah, the first the first question, and this really comes to the listing. You need to start start from like people who go to XMR Bazaar. What is the first thing that they are doing? Well, whenever they're they're on their, their however they're looking at this and they're they're flicking, um, would you actually would you have any information in terms of uh, what devices people are viewing the site on? Is it mostly mobile, mostly desktop? I imagine it's mostly mobile. I don't have information on that, but I imagine it's mostly mobile. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I built it, designed it with mobile in mind. Like right? that was a big part of having, right. making sure Anarchio made a good mobile version, version of it for sure. So that's important. If you're making your listing, you might be doing it on a desktop, but you want to check, check it, mm -hmm. check out the experience on a mobile device and make sure that everything's legible. Your pictures are clear and whatnot. But the first thing you're doing, this is essentially your advertisement, by the way, your, your listing that you, you have an opportunity here to get a click, which is what an ad does. So. Right. The key here is your headline and your display image. And this is basically your ad image and your, your ad text. So my recommendation is to uh, define what it is. So here's my listing. I just, I've got this up. 
So it's professional email marketing. It's, it's three words. <laughs> it's intentional because there's, there's like no ambiguity there. So if you want email marketing, there it is. I'm even using MailChimp. I, I, I saw that one and it was attractive. I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you needed email marketing, you might be tempted to, to click it. Um, mm -hmm. And I even use MailChimp intentionally, even though I wouldn't use MailChimp with cryptocurrency projects because MailChimp doesn't take cryptocurrency projects. But MailChimp has so much sort of brand dominance within the email marketing space that I, I chose that one intentionally as an example. Um, and so as you can see, some of these, some of these just need images, you know, um, and, and you, what you don't want to do is get to this, uh, this triple dot to here's, so, um, mm. I, I would probably recommend that this user would try shorten this down and make it, um, and there's been a lot of studies that, that, because in terms of email marketing, that people read six words, you know, they, they, they read the first three words and then they read the last three words. So if you have a sentence that's six words, you've, you've got a pretty clear sentence. So I, I'd recommend trying to keep something, um, that's about six words. Um, do you, do you think we need little, cause I think it was part of our original design and somebody brought it up like little descriptions within, um, on the, under the post, right? So in addition to the title, like maybe the, the first, whatever, 20 words of the description. Well, I, one thing I like is it's quite clean and I think that's, that's important because, um, you know, bring bring it up just for a second, and like, and I think this is a great write up you're doing. By the way, um, we should somehow promote this on XMR Bazaar so people that are like, you know, when they log in for the first time, they read this because yeah. I'm seeing a lot of people that are just like, come on, you're going through the effort of creating a, a profile, an account, like just just take it all the way, make, make your listing enticing. Like so many mm -hmm. people aren't putting up photos. Like you said, we were even talking of, uh, generating like auto photos to fill, but I, I don't want to do that. Like I rather, uh, properly educate the users and get them to, to put up photos. Cause it, it makes it so much, you know, whatever make it a requirement. Yeah. Make it, make it a requirement. Like even this one PHP developer needed to modify. You know, I don't know. What, what would you put up in that instance? That that's a good, you know, for the PHP developer. Yeah. Um. Uh, modify my CMS. Uh, so, oh, this is a request, isn't it? So this isn't a. Oh. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Uh, this, this yeah, is, this guy's looking to hire a PHP higher, developer. Higher, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Mm. So maybe maybe it's a slightly different when you're when you're requesting mm -hmm. um, services mm -hmm. rather than trying to sell. Yeah. Um, one thing it would be handy if there was a, sort of a standard a standard image size that a lot of people could. Because I'm, I'm not sure I'm not entirely sure what the sort of optimized image. Size. I uploaded a couple images and I, I sort of was operating in squares because squares tend to work better on mobile devices. We got to work on the images. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, what, and, and what... It, go ahead. So just in the article that I wrote, I do have a section on image um, sizing here. Um, okay. So um, there. Yeah, I'll, 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 let me bring that back up. But just, but yeah, but just to ask the question, yeah, what do you think in terms of the idea of maybe putting more text in the post itself? So Ukrainian mm -hmm. flag, spend $15, and then like you would see the first line or two of the description. You know, so you would begin to see this. This is the flag of Ukraine. This listing does not reflect this, the views of the publisher. Um, seeing that in the list on the front page itself. So like under here or something. Yeah, my um, my gut feeling says it's probably fine the way that it is because it's right now there's a lot of different products on different things. It's not like someone's looking at a category. So on, they're, know, they're typing in beer and they have all these different beer products that they're looking at. Um, right now, it's kind of like a mixed bag of everything. So you probably want to just keep it as as clean as possible. Okay. So and right now, there's a lot of I love all the stuff at the bottom. That's all social proof. Like you have these upvotes. You've got the number of reviews. That's really going to help when people actually start exactly. engaging with the site. Um, so for now, I probably just want to keep it as clean as possible because it's such a mixed bag of of different stuff. But if it comes mm -hmm. to a point where um, there's so many listings of the same product and you really do need that little bit of text to kind of help people stand out, then that might be worthwhile um, at that point. You know, when it comes to digital marketing and e-commerce, it's all about A-B testing. So if there was a way for you to sort of work out the click-through rates of, or the overall click-through rates of listings that have that and then don't have that, that would be a, a real great way to sort of, you know, kind of scientifically <laughs> work out if having that little text actually is a, a performance booster. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, test it. Yeah. So in terms of uh, this actual display image, um, you can see that this kind of fits within here nicely. It's not cropped out like, like this. Um, mm -hmm. And this was intentional. So I have the square image, and I, I kind of worked out that if you have something, you can download this. You can just right click and save this and use it as a template. Um, so I think I realized that the top 150 pixels, it kind of cuts off. Um, so this is, but I'm not sure if this actually works on mobile. I think if you look on, on mobile, kind of, because uh, I, I did this on desktop and I wasn't thinking about mobile at the time. So I'll have okay. to go back and just do some experiments with mobile. And so I can put both templates up. So you can download this and this, this will at least work for mobile. So if this is kind of like your, your glory area. You want your kind of key components. Oh, here. beautiful. If you, if you by by the way, before before I forget the thought, you might want to put up a listing uh, for consulting services where you, you'll give people, for, you know, for whatever, five bucks worth of Monero, you'll give them some quick feedback on their listing on how to quickly <laughs> improve it. <laughs> I think you do quite well. Yeah, certainly good. Uh, I'm happy. I, we, um, I work a lot with crowdfunding projects. Um, so I'm actually interested to maybe talk about Kuno at one, at one point. Um, Sweet. So we do a lot of consultation in terms of optimizing Kickstarter pages for for people. So that's um, in a lot in a lot of ways a lot of similar lot of similar principles that are kind of in all of this. Awesome. Um, so yeah, this is a template. I, I'll do one on, on mobile as well. I'll update this article and make sure that I've tested it on mobile. Um, so that this is really important that that display image that it's not cropped out. It's, it's very clear. I, I would not recommend putting text on display images. Uh, this is something that actually you can't even do with Google or or Facebook. They actually will they can even reject your ads uh, because it's sort of just so demonstrably shown that, that and putting um, text on your images, especially for listings or ads, doesn't improve results. Um, in fact, we have, often find that it can decrease results because they look too salesy. They look too much like advertisements, and that's that's sort of um, important. Um, yeah. Then I suppose the next thing that, that's if if you master your your headline and that image then you've got the click right and that that's mm -hmm. the key that's the only thing that those two things are trying to do is get a click right so you don't get want to click get them in the just, door yeah. yeah you want something that's accurate so when they, they click they're engaged the next thing is they're going to be reading your text they're, they're going to be looking at your images and then they're going to be reading at your text actually um i was actually experimenting at one stage if i can go to my listing so quickly i got i got one up of a headset that I'm just trying to sell. So this was me just experimenting with like different size images, but I, I tried with this image. So as you can see here, I, I just, I was trying to get like a perfect, um, I need to come back and do this, but I kind of split the image in half where instead of just having, you know, one, cause you're obviously limited by five and I'm going to use the last image to kind of show that I'm taking the circular economy pledge. So I'm, I'm sort of downed an image slot. So I figured that if I just, because the, you can upload images that are quite large, if I just, you know, split the images or even make like a grid. So that might be a way if you want to include more than you know, four or five images, you just have like your first image and then your second image would be a grid of different views. So I, I could just put all, all the variations of the size of this headset just in mm -hmm. one image. And then, you know, I, I can, I'm, I've freed up some of my other images or I'm just communicating faster in terms of those things. So the next thing you want to try to do is optimize all these different images. Um, and depending on what you're selling, you kind of want to tell a story. Uh, that's what I, I would recommend. So like your beginning, middle, and end. So I intentionally chose this angle uh, because it's very obvious that this is uh, the Oculus headset. Um, and it's also intriguing because it's, it's a little bit obscured. So that's the other thing that you want to do. If, it's, if it isn't clear, uh, the next kind of um, area you want to optimize is um, intrigue. So you want to make it clear, but then you also want to build intrigue. So this is why I kind of got like this dark lighting um, I actually need to upload images, which doesn't have such dramatic lighting <laughs> just so that people can actually see it like in, in normal daylight. But I intend to mm. use this dramatic lighting to build intrigue. And then um, you want to sort of tell the story here as, as well. So that's the next I area. Love, of I love that you're, you're, this is a great listing, by the way. Has anybody um, hit you up on it, made an offer or no? Um, no, I didn't think so. Um, mm. uh, but it comes with Half-Life Alex. So I'm giving you my Steam account as well because I only got okay. it to play Half-Life Alex and I finished the, the game. The only thing, yeah, the, the, the Monero crowd, I don't know, they might be right anti-Facebook, anti-meta. So you, sure, you might, yeah. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, inter I'm interested. Uh, I know my daughter would like one of the, is this, I don't know a lot about the meta. This is the, obviously not the latest version. There's later versions or no? Yeah. It, they recently brought out, like, I think a third one. So, um, okay. yeah, I think it's... Um, in terms of meta, you you have to have a meta account, but just you can create a new one and just don't, don't use it, you know. But you just need uh -huh. it to. Um, also, kind of creepy that my um uh, because how this works is that you you run like Half Life Alex on your desktop and then you use another app that you have to buy. I think it's about it's about ten pounds. It's not too expensive. Called Virtual Desktop, and it kind of connects your desktop to your headset. 
but my my desktop blew up. I got a power surge. <laughs> just, so my computer was dead for a while. I couldn't finish the game. It was a bit frustrating. <laughs> and I, I just put the heads, headset on the shelf. And I never put the headset on the shelf without charging it. So it w I know that when I put it on the shelf, it was at least charged. But when I when I fixed, eventually fixed my computer a couple of weeks later, turned this back on, the headset was completely dead. Mm. So that means that even though I had it off, it somehow was using battery and it was still on essentially. So which is super creepy. <laughs> that is a little creepy. Yeah, you never so turn I, it off. I always kind of kept it like in a in a cupboard closed. <laughs> so please, but I'm sure it's oh fine God. on you. So uh, you want to be careful with Meta. I think <laughs> this, this is why you're selling it. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if you're gonna get too many takers in the Monero community. Yeah. Really? I'm really sell I'm really selling this headset to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could give it give it to a um, I don't know a, a loved one <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> He maybe not isn't too concerned with uh, the privacy. So yeah, the um, the, the images are, is the the next element, and then it's your description. Um, mm -hmm. Now I actually got my wife to help me with uh, this description because I don't know if you have it in the states. There's a sort of secondhand uh, e-commerce st store called Vinted, and I I was almost tempted to like go into my DNS on the router, like just block the the DNS of of this website because she uses it all the time. But she's sort of a pro, at like, 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 and she helped me. She actually consulted me on how to um, add this text. So one thing she told me to mention is like, oh, from a pet-free and smoke-free home, um, which I thought was, oh, okay. I would have never thought to add that. And she said, oh, yeah, that's something that they put on Vinted so that, you know, you know your products don't smell of smoke or they don't have, you know, okay. cat, cat hair on there or something. So that might be worth mentioning. And um, again, Dude, you're, it, you're, you're adding so much value to XMR Bazaar, man. Lo loving this. I'm, <laughs> I'm loving all this uh, thought you put into this. Keep going. Yeah, and then I suppose the next description is you want to keep it short and sweet and, and very and very accurate um, mm -hmm. in terms of hey, this is what you want. Um, as you can see, I'm also putting um, I'm not I don't there's not a paragraph of text. I very intentionally put a sentence on each line. Just makes it just easier to read. So I recommend doing that as well. Is uh, so this is what literally what it is. It's the Quest Two with with the the Elite strap, and then the next part it's in you know it's excellent use condition. I factory reset it and it has its original packaging, and it also includes the, the these two games you can, on Steam. Mm -hmm. um, a bit of a disclaimer here: you need you do need a meta account, you do need virtual desktop uh, to, to play the games, um, and there's some extra details. Um, I do know when I first tried to put stuff on Monero, uh, sorry, on XMR Bazaar, I couldn't use emojis. I don't know if that's being changed, but that would be a really great feature because you kind of put like a little, you could put little emojis just to kind of make those pop and. Mm -hmm. This is where I recommend putting emojis. I, like even here, I would, I'd remove these kind of dashes with like the check mark, mm -hmm. the green check mark. Um, and yeah, then I have the Monero Circuit Economy page down here. Um, so yeah, you could, if you, if you don't, are you in? Are you in the group Telegram chat? The no. um, or not the Telegram. The uh, we have a chat. Tux Tux could give it's you the link. You should chat. definitely be in there. The Matrix okay. chat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Um, I do have a. I, I am set up on Matrix. I just need to join the the channel. I can do it. Yep, after this. I got you. <laughs> we'll, and then we'll throw the we'll throw the link in the in the chat here for anybody else that wants to join. And then finally, because now now you've got you've got the images, you've got your description. Then if you keep on scrolling, the next thing they see is your user profile. So this is actually part of your listing, and maybe people haven't mm -hmm. even thought about that. Um, right. So this is where I basically have social proof here. I just, you know, like I'm very glad I'm running a local node. I'm actually running two local nodes because I run a one, a full one on my desktop and on my laptop. I um, probably should put that in. You know, I'm currently mining. Um, I was even thinking of putting like my my P2 pool observer link in there, so like you can actually demonstrate. Look, you can actually look at the shares I just mined. Ah, so you might you might want like to put it. that in there. Um, you look, I'm I'm a Monero Circle Comedy Pledge adopter, and then it's kind of like I've got some more social proof. I've been featured on some Monero um, articles here. Um, and then there's just a little bit about my my intention with uh, my business, and then a link to Fantastic. my website. Fantastic! You you are using XMR Bazaar the way we intended, envisioned people would would use it. I love it, man. Yeah. Fantastic! Fantastic advice. I do I do think uh, you know offering people consulting on it, or maybe just hitting them up individually, like, hey, uh, you know, I offer consulting on listings if you want. Yeah, well, I um, definitely use some help. I could certainly uh, add that here. I, I did put like meta and like um, email. I see the here it's kind of cut off, but this is a strange dis yeah. display of my, my screen right you now. You got me. You got me thinking too for like uh, paid paid accounts, things we could offer, right? So maybe you could post a video clip. So in addition to photos, right? If you have a paid account or a pro account, whatever we want to call it. Uh, now, in addition to 
maybe it lets you add more photos or it lets you add a short video clip, right? If you had a short video clip of that meta, right, that would obviously be a lot more attractive to a buyer than just seeing some still photos. Um, another thought too is like analytics, right? Maybe eventually we offer users analytics so they could see how their listings are doing and, mm -hmm. you know, things they may want to improve. They could see, you know, how many click-throughs they're getting, things like that. Yeah, well, I think where you, you could certainly make um, income because there's going to come, come a stage, hopefully, that there'll be so many listings that if you made a new listing, it's just going to be lost in the sea of right. the oblivion Promoted. of all the listings. So it's not, it's going to be, so you actually do need some type of algorithm that can help mm -hmm. people find um, stuff. Um, uh, so I, I think what you could you could do is that maybe people could pay in order to in, in kind of increase the amount of tags for searches or to even put their product on a specific, specific category. So mm -hmm. um, th that might be a way to do it. So if you have a free listing, it's just, you know, it's this open market and anyone can find it, but also means that no one can find it, but in, in order to actually kind of have a bit more nuance in your your listing, uh, you can you can pay to do that. Another thing, yeah, you pro can, a, pro a promoted listing, but in a more intelligent way than just throwing it on the front page is what you're saying. Yeah, like, I, and it, to be honest, th there's a difference of philosophy um, between like Google and and Meta, for example, when it comes to display advertising. And for all, I, <laughs> I I completely hate Facebook. You know, I, I I'm not. I'm not a, a Facebook maxi or anything, but one thing I will say is that Facebook has really mastered the art of display advertising. They're the leaders in it. They have done a fantastic job um, by putting the right ads in front of the right people at the right time. Whilst the Google model is completely different. The Google model for display advertising is basically the, to pay for the privilege to annoy users. So they try, they pay for upgraded features to block ads, <laughs> which is, which is horrible for the advertiser. But, um, this is why I, I, I don't really like the idea of just, you know, blindly boosting ads because an increase of impressions doesn't necessarily mean an increase in a click through. Um, in fact, you could even annoy people with your, your listing if they're seeing it all the time, if they're not interested. So you actually do need, you need, you need targeting. You do need a bit of tracking, unfortunately, to make this, make this work. So um, I know that a lot of people in the Monero community might not, might not like to hear that, but I, I do think that if there's a way to sort of do tracking that's anonymous, that doesn't, you know, expose people's information, but it, you know, I think there's a balance here, which I think could be potentially met. I think another thing that you could do in terms of um, monetizing uh, this website is that if there was a way for the Monero, Monero Circuit Economy Pledge or something the, of the equivalent, like a checkbox, that meant that you, when if people paid, in Monero, it goes. It's it's basically custodial, right? So that you have you can you can it stays within the website, but then you can buy other things within the website. Um, that might just make it easier in terms of um, you know you have the option to just keep everything on the website, and it's like a balance that you can then buy other stuff on on the website. Um, mm. And then you you take yeah, the that, that, of the that, that might be yeah that would be tricky for us only because. The law, right? So yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to not be labeled a money transmitter in any way and, and take a different approach. And then that also makes it very competitive in terms of ne never taking any fees on the transactions themselves. So mm -hmm. uh, that that's the current thinking strategy, right? Makes us makes us more competitive and pure. Here we are. We're just a platform where you guys can make it into whatever you want. The more you use it, the better. And we're not we're not taking a, a fee off of how you guys use it. And then more importantly, uh, we're not getting into the business of being a money transmitter. So that, yeah, that, that might be uh, a hard feature to add without getting into that realm. Right. Because at that point you're saying you're, you're literally being custodial, you're holding yeah. the Monero fort. Right. Yeah. And then you could even argue yeah. perhaps you're publishing even, you know, so right. right yeah. Right, no, right, that, right. that makes sense. I just, it was one thing I was, uh, it is a good idea though, about. for sure. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Awesome, so, yeah. man. I, I love all the thought you put into this and you're, you're obviously a professional in this area. So greatly appreciate that you contributed in this way, man. Little, little things like this, little things like this, you know, uh, you, you, you don't, you don't realize, right. You're in, in a small way, you're adding value to what we're doing here. A lot of people are doing that. So many people are engaging with us in that matrix chat. I'll put it up here. 
Uh, and it's so helpful, guys, that like if you want to help this effort in any way, just start using it, create a profile, and give us your feedback. It's tremendous help just doing that. Um, so thank you, man. I greatly appreciate your your detailed feedback and thoughts on how people can better use Monero marketplaces. Very, very, yeah. very awesome, man. What do you? Uh, obviously, you're you're driven by this. At, like I assume, like myself, out of out of a pure passion for the project. <laughs> you believe in Monero. You're trying to to help make it successful. Are you working? Uh, are you trying to think of how you could start? making money in the Monero community yourself? Like things, uh, do you have business ideas for, for Monero that you're working on or anything you want to put out there? Yeah, well, originally I, I sort of just started Monero Master as a, as a way to actually encourage local businesses here in the UK to adopt Monero. I, I figured if there's going to be any type of Monero economy, then small businesses need to adopt Monero. And then they're going to need a touch point. They're going to need somebody who can hold their hand and get their wallet set up and answer their questions and address their their issues. And then my, my hope was to eventually then build up a Monero business net, networking system. So almost like BNI, if you're familiar with that system, but for Monero. So, you know, Monero entrepreneurs would meet together, network, and, you know, help each other, consult, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So that's sort of the the, the kind of broad goal I had. Um, but then I figured, like, if, if I'm going to be helping people run a Monero business, then I need to um, be accepting Monero for my business. So, uh, that then led to me offering my own skills in terms of marketing. So I, I have listed those on um, XMR Bazaar. Um, but then also I, I was uh, doing some stuff with steganography because that was just a hobby of mine, uh, hiding your seed and, and audio files and hiding them in image files and things, and then using a, a little bit of um, manual encryption, which isn't by any means foolproof, but it's better than nothing. And it's a way to encrypt your seed without a computer or the internet connection, which was quite attractive to me. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I, I just missed that. That was your project that you were working on. Yes. Yeah. That's how I sort of started by. Um, oh, okay. Sort of I, that. Yeah. That was. I love that idea. That was really cool. You want. You want to <laughs> bring that up? Show that. Yeah, I haven't put it up on XMR Bazaar, Bazaar yet. Um, I do have it on Monero Monero Marketplace. Um, but yeah, the, essentially the idea is that if if you want to have a backup of your seed, um, then in, in a way that's digitized and you. My idea is trying to do this as securely as possible, um, because I, I do not really like the idea of having one, you know, point of contention. I think I actually have an article on MineraMaster.com, uh, my Substack, that outlines how to encrypt your seed using a, a Virginia cipher, which is a, a it was it was a cipher that was um, it wasn't cracked for three hundred years, so for a long time it was a, a great way to encrypt things. Uh, it can now be, you know demolished by brute force and you know, computer analysis. So I, I would, wouldn't recommend it as a foolproof encryption method. But in terms of stopping someone from just looking at your seed and seeing it in plain text, it's better than nothing. But then the idea was to combine this with some type of steganography, which is um, how to conceal things in plain sight. So um, I was doing this digitally. So I was uh, using, it's known as additive image synthesis. So within the audio spectrum, you have harmonics. One additive image synthesis, synth synth can't speak synthesizer does is that it, it actually creates the harmonics within the, the sound waves whilst most synthesizers subtract harmonics and what this allows you to do is it allows you to embed images or messages within the actual audio spectrum of songs so you could using your encrypted seed you could bake your seed in an image file and no one would really know it would be a bit of an audio defect but um you know you could have it on your computer and it's it's immune to word searches because it's actually baked in the physical spectrum of the harmonics of of, of the audio wave of the song um and then another thing i was also thinking of sstv which is slow scan television so you could develop a, a an sstv signal and it kind of just sounds like gibberish um but then you can use that you can get a transcoder and you can transcode an image from that audio file so that's another way you could back it back up your sort of image file and the, mm -hmm. the cool thing about that method is that you can actually communicate that through radio if you wanted to so um, um if, 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 you were, awesome. if, if you're in a bind you know and you needed uh, and I, i've done that so you could communicate you can just put it off a speaker and get the transcoder um or you just have on your phone the the audio file and then you just have a transcoder on your your laptop picking it up on the mic and it's um so you're kind of reducing the signal it's just coming through your microphone it's not coming through the internet or something so um and so you wrote up a blog post like kind of teaching people how to do that or yeah i can send you a link um here get it up here now i i thought i saw had saw another post recently but maybe it was yours but it was this i don't know 
yeah, just this concept of kind of uh, hiding the keys in files. Yes. Yeah. So that's just a very a very basic way to hide it in like yeah. a, an an image file. Right. Um, again, none of these things are are, are foolproof. Um, I don't know where I can sure. throw this in the chat, but um, I don't know if that there is. But if you go to MoneroMaster.com, mm -hmm. um, it's how to encrypt your Monero seed without the, the internet or a computer. And I think that's quite attractive, being able to mm -hmm. do this without any type of third party. There's obviously better encryption methods, but one thing I don't like about them is that you're always somewhat dependent on a third party. So being able to like encrypt your seed without the need of internet, I think is pretty important. And also be able to decrypt it. And I have a PDF download where you can download essentially a template that allows you to use a Virginia cipher to encrypt your seed. So this might be worth doing, even if you don't plan to use steganography, just in terms of mm -hmm. storing it in your house, because I actually wrote this in, in response to the UK passing a law where they could, uh, the police can uh, confiscate your um, your seeds without an arrest, which is like, well, that's kind of scary. Well, if they can do that, I'd rather have some type of encryption <laughs> so not make it easy for them. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this this is the um, the idea behind this, and um, this is how the cipher works. Um, it's it's called a polyalphabetic cipher. So you're using uh, two alphabets to sort of uh, with a with a passphrase to. So here's your here's your keyword. It's just or passphrase. It's XMR XMR XMR. You just repeat it, and then your plain text would be your your seed, and then your cipher text would be uh, this jumbled up. So I do have a download. You can download a PDF, and it kind of outlines. Um, how to do this step by step, and this article out, outlines it too. So, if people want to just have a little bit of redundancy in terms of uh, securing their seed, then this is a great free way of of doing that. I love it, man. I love it. I love your your website too. Looks great. Yeah, Monero it's just Master. a Substack. Um, so, uh, my my principle is actually a principle I take from um, cybernetics uh, mm -hmm. in terms of feedback where you always want to, I think it's, it's important when growing businesses, you, you grow with results and you test. So you, you want to iterate quickly. So you, you, I'll start off with, oh, encrypting people's seeds and see how people think about that. Oh, people don't like that idea. And then you, you're just kind of constantly adjusting. And what Substack allowed me to do was make those changes quickly without a lot of investment in, t in terms of money and time. Everything's kind of built into one. But um, I know some people have criticized using Substack because it, you know it's, it uses Cloudflare and it's, it's subject to man-in-the-middle attacks and it's not exactly the most private way of, running a, a website but for the time being it's it's just it's it's convenient and at one stage i'll probably will move to you know full self-hosting and <laughs> having this a bit more um locked down fantastic fantastic i'm just looking at the comments here uh oh they're talking about the wallet uh unknown is saying please look up the new business listings on xmr bazaar hold on let me uh saying uh it's booming all right let me, let me let me pull it up i haven't actually checked it out in a while the business listings part let me bring that up i love this um this monero flag by the way don't spy <laughs> on me i'm loving that how big is this three sizes 18 inches by 12 there's I'm, i might get one of these i'm wearing the shirt i this is my, my favorite monero shirt is the gladstein uh flag the don't spy on me i love it it's actually for the mallorca bitcoin uh blockchain conference and uh, i know those guys from monerocon great guys awesome guys and i love their shirt but let's uh let's see right the listings business listings oh yeah yeah we got it we got a bunch up a bunch of listings Let's say hundred per page. Yeah, there's some of the pork fest ones. Yeah, we got people. All right, we got we got people putting up the business listings. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then there's the the actual the map. Where's the link to the map actually? Uh, oh, view map. Yeah, I don't know how well. Uh, the map is working out right now because not everybody is putting in the proper formatting for it. What do we have here? Oh, this is my listing. <laughs> that's, that's my. <laughs> okay. Mexico. What do we got going on in here? 
Uh, okay, that's people selling a SIM card. All right, so it's not... Oh, because it's all listings. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm learning things with XMR Bazaar every day myself so that you can <laughs> view the map by listings or just business listings. Very cool, man. Yeah, guys, just keep just keep adding them. Keep adding them. Thank you so much, man. Greatly, greatly appreciate uh, you doing all this. Like I said, anything else you want to get out there? Anything you want to shill? Please, please do so. Now's the time. Yeah, I suppose the encouragement for people to use Monero as a um, as it was intended as a currency. You know, it's called cryptocurrency. It's not called crypto stock. <laughs> um, I, I think you know Roger Ver. Uh, in his book, Hijacking Bitcoin, has sort of shown the defects of Bitcoin. And mm. um, I think one, one question we all need to ask ourselves is, can that happen to Monero? And um, the only way that we can sort of ensure that that doesn't happen is by people being involved and implementing solutions and with their particular skill set. So uh, I think there's a lot to learn from that book. I'd highly recommend anyone read, read it. And um, yeah, I, I have a, a conviction, a strong conviction to... Uh, use uh, Monero because I see it as a, a useful tool in fighting the coming technocratic surveillance state that we're all sort of being engulfed in. And um, I just see it as the opposing force, right? Because as we see society move towards a unjust global surveillance state, well, the opposing force logically is a ju is just personal privacy. Those are the three mm -hmm. kind of opposites of that system. And I think Monero fits nicely within that as, as a tool to resist uh, this this coming. So it, it, in one way, it's a bit strange because I, I kind of wear two hats where this, you know, one side of me is, is really into being able to track results for uh, advertising campaigns. Mm -hmm. And and there's another part of me that um, really wants to ensure that there is privacy on the internet and that uh, people do as much as they can to be anonymous. And, uh, and like right now, I'm, I'm in the process of switching from Windows to Pure OS. So that's sort of my, my transition. Uh, lately, um, uh, personally, um, even in the work environment, I just want to get off Windows. <laughs> no, no, what's coming down the line with Windows 11? And the party is and, as bad as I think it is, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is interesting. So, you, given that your 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 day job is is basically in surveillance, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's it's using people's data to uh, give them the ads that they want to see. Um, so you 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 see firsthand the power of that. Right, well, so to, guess... to a degree, right? Because I only have access to what Meta and Google mm -hmm. allow me to see. So I'm sure they have even greater control. Of course. Um, and I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people, they put, and this is a convenient excuse for, for these big tech companies to blame marketers. When marketers aren't the people that are trying to steal your data and, and use it maliciously, they're, all they're trying mm -hmm. to do is, is actually serve you. Yeah, they yeah. want to they want to put things that you actually want in front of you so that you will actually take action on it. They're trying to help you. They're not tr trying to... Um, and I, I suppose there's, there's marketers of various you know, moral degrees and some may mm. not, not care about that. But I think it's a convenient excuse for big tech to say, oh, yeah, we're doing this because of the marketers when really it's 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 not. Um, I think it, it's important to know what the social media sites are and then to use them appropriately. So, for example, I have a, a meta account, but I only use it for business. I don't put any I don't talk to my family on that. I intentionally don't have any family in my friends list or interact with any family on it i literally only use it for business and use it within certain uh, niche uh, groups that help me stay on top of kind of trends within the industry that i'm in um so it's very controlled in, in that sense and i only upload the the, the least amount of information necessary to use it um and i think that's a, that's a maybe a good way to philosophy to have and um but at the end of the day we need we need better alternatives Right. So if, if someone's listening who has the skill set to build a social media site that can optimize tracking in a way that doesn't compromise people's data, then it might be something that's worth looking into. Um, certainly because for all the negative things of, of Meta and Facebook and Google, small businesses are somewhat dependent on them. Like I'm, I'm currently helping a friend and he's, he's got a, a small business selling mattresses. And he's able to spend two dollars or two pounds a day uh, on meta ads and actually make sales. And that, that's a, that's pretty phenomenal if you're a small business and to actually spend such a small amount and, and actually generate sales doing that. Um, which, which is, I think there's a lot to be said about that. That's a very useful tool. Um, it's unfortunate that it has a more nefarious side, as as we all know. Um, and I think most people are 
maybe willfully ignorant or just they are completely ignorant of the the original the origins of Facebook and Meta and its its history, especially with U.S. intelligence and and LifeLog. <laughs> you know, that's really what it came out of uh, the LifeLog project of the U.S. military and um, using it under 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 that assumption. Um, you know, we saw this with Twitter, right? In terms of the Samurai wallet, their DMs were completely public and leaked, and because nothing's private, right? You have to just assume when using these social sites that there's a government agent looking over your shoulder. <laughs> so if you under, if you go in with that kind of mentality, I think you can use it uh, appropriately. But um, I, it, there's obviously a need to get off of these sites as much as possible and only use them as as much as is necessary, and to build up alternatives and use those alternatives. How how f how far how how much can we can we grow the Monero circular economy? Something like XMR Bazaar. I mean, what 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 do you see as being possible with it? Uh, like you're kind of alluding to here, where you know the the way things are traditionally done with marketing and the existing social media sites that exist. It's it's about taking everybody's data and um, having central control over these systems, and, and with that, you can do great great things uh, in terms of convenience and what you could offer the customers, but it comes at a price to the customer. Uh, with something like Monero and XMR Bazaar, where we're trying to build out a peer-to-peer -peer circular economy, you lose some of those conveniences. Maybe there's ways to get around it and kind of rebuild those conveniences in a less nefarious way. But uh, we got, given, given your expertise, what? how far do you think we can take it? What do you think the future Monero circular economy looks like? How can it, is it, can we get it to, you know, millions of people living off Monero around the world using tools like XMR Bazaar and whatever else we, we end up inventing? Probably not. If, if I'm going to be honest, I, I, I'm somewhat black pilled in terms of where this all heads, where all this is going. I sort of take the same approach that Julian Assange takes in his book, Cypherpunks. In the last mm -hmm. chapter, he has a, ch a chapter yeah, called um, rats in the opera house and he sort of he gives us an example of how he was at the sydney opera house and he, he saw this rat that had somehow snuck in and was climbing on tables and just having a having a ball of a time eating food and and whatnot and he, he sort of likened that to the cypherpunks living in this technocratic surveillance state that with all of the security measures in the opera house you know a rat can still climb through the walls and operate and kind of behind the scenes and i think a lot of people think that monero is going to be banned i don't think it ever, ever will be banned because that's not it, that's not how technocrats think. It's not how they work. And I think you have to understand your enemy. You really do need to study the, the historical roots of technocracy because this is what's, what's being pushed forward. And I, I would recommend you read the books of Patrick Wood. He's sort of the lead researcher on this subject. But technocrats, they use social engineering to control pop, the populace. Monero will not be banned, in my opinion. I think what will happen to Monero is that they will just make the tax compliance so laborious that it, it will be deleterious for businesses to adopt it. So, And then it won't be banning Monero, it would be, you know, your tax compliance is so ridiculously difficult to to do correctly that they can just charge you for tax evasion or some ta mm. tax fraud. And that's how they will stop it. They'll they'll use nudge nudges and pressures. They're not going to flat out ban it. Not, they're not going to kick down your door and, you know, steal your, your Monero. They, they will surveil you and then use social engineering techniques through technology like social media and your and censorship in order to nudge you to a certain behavior. I, I, Douglas, I think this is where this is going, if I'm going to be honest. Um, imagine you wake up one morning, and the first thing you do, you check your phone, some type of social media site, and you see a post like, oh, that's interesting, and you you share it, and, and you, you hide it. Then you get up, you put on your robe, and you head over to your kitchen. You're going to have some of that sweet, sweet, gratuitous coffee <laughs> that you're planning to have. And as you're walking to the, the kitchen, you get a notification on your phone. And it says, oh, uh, the notification says something to the effect of, you have uh, engaged in some type of policy violation. Uh, please remove um, your interactions on that post, and you just ignore it. You get to the kitchen, and as you go on to turn your kettle, you, your phone vibrates again. It says, "Sorry, you're unable to turn on your kettle because you still have not complied with this. Please do so in five minutes. Otherwise, we will permanently shut down your kettle." And that is how this will operate. It will operate through through a complete centralization of all technology. This is why I think they want everything on electricity and they want smart meters. They can control yeah. ap applications and appliances in your home to do something like that. It's not going to be, mm -hmm. you know, some p police officer kicking down your door and it's not, like, that's what the Bolsheviks did, right? They kind of like by brute force, you know, that's how those totalitarian regimes worked and it didn't work. The USSR fell within a hundred years. It didn't even last a hundred years. 
the technocrats are far more sophisticated in their uh, strategy in terms of controlling pop populations. And they do this through social engineering. Um, and it's something that I keep a close eye on because as a, as a marketer, that's essentially what you're doing. It's, it's, it's a form of behavioral modification, it's a form of behavioral control. Um, I try to do it in a way that isn't nefarious, <laughs> you know, isn't, isn't, um, I try to do it in a positive sense. It's, it's a tool, right? You can use these tools uh, for good or for evil. Um, and in fact, even Hitler in, in Mein Kampf, he has a whole chapter on propaganda and he defines propaganda as a weapon. And it is a weapon. It can be, it's mm -hmm. used in, in wartime to destroy your enemy. And he actually uh, says in, in his writing there that the, one of the reasons why the, the, the Germans lost the World War One, he, he attributes solely to, to the British and their propaganda efforts. He says there was far superior in propaganda. And I agree. I think the British have, have led the, in, in the terms, in the realms of, of propaganda and probably still do. Um, so you have to understand the, 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 th the thinking of your, your enemy their techniques and their methods. And it comes back to Sun Tzu, right? The art of war, you know, know your enemy and you have to know your enemy. You have to know what their end goal is, which is a complete technocratic uh, surveillance state where they are, they, they not only are changing society, they're changing you as well. And that's part of this. It's uh, Patrick Wood has an excellent book called the, the evil twins of Tech technocracy and transhumanism. I recommend that people read that. It's a great primer into the subject. And ideally this, this ideology goes hand in hand with tech, with transhumanism. It's, it's about changing you. Um, <laughs> imagine if, if you woke up one day and suddenly you had gills. You know? It's like, I can't breathe. I need water. It's like, oh, here we go. And, uh, and some benevolent, you know, multi-billionaire says, oh, I've, I've created the perfect habitat for you. Here's an underwater, you know, utopia I've created. All you have to do is, is jump in. So by changing you, they can then make you prepared for the, the correct environment in which they want to get you in. Um, so that's why these things sort of go hand in hand. Um, it's actually called operant conditioning. I'm sorry to mm. go on a, on, a, on a tangent, but it's no, this it's, is fantastic, it's all, man. It's all yeah. sort of interconnected. Um, you know, so in, in the beginning of the sort of the, the 20th century, you had a uh, Pavlov and his, his bell ringing, and that was in the USSR. And then in the States, you had BF Skinner, and they pretty much were doing the same thing. It's this, it's, it's, it's the science of behaviorism. And the idea is that if you can control someone's environment, you can then control their behavior. That's that's essentially what it comes down to. So when the bell rings, the dogs salivate, you eventually take the, the food away and all you have is the bell. You can ring the bell and and they continue to salivate. Uh, I think it's very interesting that on all social media sites, what is the symbol of the notification icon? The, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's a bell. It's, it's, it's the Pavlov, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, is, is that intentional? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but the, the techniques are certainly the same. By controlling what's on your feed, uh, it can, it can, it's in a way of controlling your environment or controlling your perception of the environment, which can then modify your behavior. Um, mm -hmm. Even how the news feed operates, it's like a slot machine. You know, if you ever found yourself just scrolling endlessly on, on the news feed, it's because they, it is intentionally designed to put useful information and things which isn't so useful so that you're constantly getting a mix of really good content and really bad content. So you, you're, con you're inclined to uh, scroll more. Keep looking. Yeah. This is called a, a vari variable ratio of reinforcement. Um, so Skinner, and he had these Skinner boxes. He, he put uh, pigeons in these boxes, and he had them tap on a, a peck on the wall to dispense food. And he found that if you if you you know delay that every five seconds, you know the, the, the pigeon will eventually learn every five seconds that's when they get food. But if you randomize the, the dispensing of the, the feed, with the, the peck, the, the the rate of pecking scales e exponentially. <laughs> so this is and this is the same sort of idea behind slot machines. So essentially, when you're on your news feed and you're scrolling, you're you're pulling a slot machine every single time, and it's done by design. It's, mm -hmm. And this is this is why advertisers love social media, right? Because it is a it's a behavioral shaping tool, and yeah, it's, it's a way to get products in front of people. So it, they, there's a good use to this. I'm not I'm not trying to paint it all bad but it certainly is uh, intended to shape your perception of reality and then control your behavior um, and this is why i think i'm pretty black pilled when it comes to the um the technocratic state and just i suppose just mm -hmm. the attitudes of people i think too many people are too happy to be socially engineered too too happy to be conditioned um because you really need a populace to embrace this who is dependent on their their urges 
being mm -hmm. satiated. You know, if, if you remove a moral compass of doing what is right, which could not be unpleasurable or lead to negative consequences. Um, but if you, if you can create or get people accustomed to only living for immediate gratification, and that's what these social media sites do, they, they give you dopamine. Then you, you're creating a populace that is, is easier to control with technology. And I think this, it's all part of the plan to get people into the, the technocratic system. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of what we're up against and uh, how technocracy works and how it is working and it's growing in power. Uh, but perhaps I'm a little bit more optimistic in terms of, you know, what we can do in terms of resist, you know, the 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 mouse that you see that pops out is just the one that popped out. We go into the walls behind the wall of the theater and there's million, there's thousands of them and then go, <laughs> the breeding. go on, go under the ground in New York and there, there's more rats than people and they're thriving. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do think I, with, with tools like Monero, Monero uh, more than anything else, um, I just don't see how they, you know, stop us to that degree. It just really does come down to, and perhaps this is why you're perhaps more pessimistic than I, is an understanding of human nature, right? And you obviously understand it very well. You're an advertiser. Um, you, you, know, you know how people function. Uh, so uh, ultimately, what will people choose, right? And you're saying they'll, they'll, they'll choose slavery, technocracy, because that's what they've been trained to do and what they've done in the past. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there's enough of us that, that choose liberty because the, the opt-out option is there. The tools are there. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, none, none of us know. But I think, I, I think I'm a little bit more optimistic than you, though, in that regard. Yeah, I think for me, a lot of it comes down to worldview. And I, I personally got into Monero because mm. of my Christian beliefs. I think mm. Monero gels well with my Christian presuppositions in terms of private property, uh, um, accountability, you know, being actually accountable mm -hmm. for your actions, uh, the use of uh, stewardship and actually using your resources. But then also what, what the Bible predicts about the end of the age and the end of the world. You know, there's a great deal of the Bible. I think even Joe, Joe Rogan pointed this out recently in Revelation 13, talks about a global government, global religion, and a global economy in which you cannot buy or sell unless you are plugged into this beast system. And I, I certainly see that happening on, on the horizon, near horizon. So um, I, I'm, I, I'm not a humanist. So I don't think there's any human way of stopping this. I think it's somewhat inevitable, but that doesn't mean you don't resist it. It doesn't mean you don't fight it. So I'm, I'm all for the fight. I'm all for uh, peaceful non-compliance and, and resisting this, but I don't think it's going to be stopped by human means. Um, so I, I am hopeful. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm pessimistic or depressed or, or down about it. I just, I have a confidence in something else. You're, you're, you're pragmatic about it and you're obviously hopeful enough in that you're, you're, you're trying, you're trying to resist, uh, with things yeah. like, you know, the efforts here with the Monero circular economy pledge. So yeah, well, 100% or you wouldn't be doing this, right? It'd be futile if, if you didn't think there, there was something we can get out of trying, um, Monero Master Matt, thank you so much. This is fantastic. Obviously, I, I think this would have deserved a, a Monero talk, but uh, I'm glad I'm glad you jumped on on here. We could talk again. Any chance we see you down at Monero Topia, Mexico? Uh, probably not. Um, I have a very busy life, and I've got lots of little kids, <laughs> so okay, All it's, right. it's, it Understood. can be difficult to get away. But at some point, I'd love to. Um, um, actually, I think you should, you should try and connect with Derek Bros because I do know he's in Mexico and he has yeah, he'll be in the past. He'll be there. He was there oh, last great. year. He'll be there this year. Yep, okay, for sure. So yeah, he's he's a cool dude. So um, yeah, I'd love to go, um, but probably not in the near future. I think um, at some point, but definitely. Yeah, no worries, man. Just throwing it out there because obviously we'd love to have you down there. Uh, it's Monero Master to f to f uh, follow Monero Master's blog. Any any what's your Twitter? Anything? Any other info you want to put out there? People yeah, can follow you. Yeah, just MoneroMaster.com. It does redirect there. So MoneroMaster.com okay. is where you can go. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really too active on Twitter, so it might not be worth <laughs> following me there. No but I'm sure if you you could probably find me. Uh, I don't even know what my handle is um, technically. I think it's Monero underscore Master is what is what it is. But um, yeah, Substack might be the place where you want to. And people people can find you on XMR Bazaar as well, right? So you sure. can interact with him there. Um, buy and sell goods and services with Monero Master. Uh, hire him for consulting to improve your listing. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, you can stick around if you like. If you got to go, we understand. But thanks for stopping by. Great. I really appreciate the time. Talk soon.